Hey Charms and welcome back to another video. Now this week I was strolling through my social media when I stumbled across a video that I must admit kind of piqued my curiosity somewhat. It was over on the cake decorating company's Facebook page I think and um, it was for a product that I had never seen before. I posted about it on my Instagram stories and quite a few of you were equally as intrigued so I figured in this week's video we would uh, track one down and put it to the test. Let's get to the video. So as I say, the video in question was on the Cake Decorating Company's Facebook page and it was for the Polaroid Candy Play 3D Pen. I'm gonna pop the video in now so you guys can actually see what I'm talking about. So as you can see from the video, essentially it advertises itself as like a kind of 3D printer for candy. And I mean, having seen the video, I, I did wonder exactly what it was all about. I've never seen anything like it before and I was suitably intrigued. So naturally we were gonna have to track one down and um, have a play with it ourselves. Now I'll be honest with you, the kind of the video making the numbered topper, I don't really feel shows off. It was, it was, it wasn't great. In fact, quite a few people commented on my Instagram story telling me that they weren't very impressed by that. But they were also quite hopeful that it, it would be able to do more. So again, I figured let's get one, let's put it to the test and let's see what it's all about. Now I headed over to the Cake Decorating Company's website and I picked up the, the starter kit which comes with the Polaroid Candy Play 3D pen itself and then it also comes with kind of a multi-pack of six different flavoured cartridges or candy cartridges as they're called. And the first thing I was really interested to know was what exactly are these candies? They're advertised as sugar free which naturally made me think of isomalt and now I've actually had the chance to look at the box, it does indeed say each one is 99.64% isomalt and then just some, some flavourings. In the box with the pen itself, we get one Polaroid Candy Play 3D pen and holder, one 1.5 meter USB-C power cable, USB power adapter not included, four sugar-free candy cartridges in strawberry, one finishing cartridge and one quick start guide. It says the power requirements are a 5.0 volt DC 2 amp power adapter. Using an incorrect power adapter will result in the pen not working properly. Well, we all know that I have a track record on this channel of not using proper power supplies. So I'm gonna hope that an Apple plug is, is suitable and I'm, I'm gonna check. Okay, so according to the internet, an Apple USB charger adapter thing is five volts at one amp. Well, that's not ideal. I don't, I don't actually remotely understand what that means. So um, I think we're just gonna use an Apple one and hope for the best and hope that this isn't going to end up being a continuation of the previous sagas that we had with the Easy Bake Oven. But on this channel, we never really know, do we? I'm gonna put a second camera on so you can see what I'm doing here and then um, let's get this thing open and actually have a look at it. So this is what it looks like in the box. This is what's inside. So there are our four sugar-free candy cartridges in strawberry flavor. There is the pen itself, and it's really light actually. I'm quite surprised by that. And then we have presumably a, is that a stand. We'll come back to that. And then the charger cable. Before I start putting things together, I'm, I'm going to look at the little book actually. So. Okay, so first, when you're using it for the first time, you have to put in two candy cartridges. And in fact, it says every time you use it after cleaning, you will need to insert two cartridges. The red button turns on the extruder and then you press it again to turn it off. They recommend drawing onto greaseproof paper or baking parchment. And once the candy cartridge being used is finished, the piston will automatically retract to allow you to insert another one. 
Um, but once the candy cartridge has been inserted and the piston has started, it cannot be removed. The Polaroid Candy Play 3D pen must be cleaned thoroughly before the first use and again after every use. Okay, uh, so then I'm supposed to wash, not that, not that, but that bit, that bit, that bit, that bit, and that bit. One, two, three, four, five. All of these need to be washed every time you use it. So before we can use it, I have to wash these. So I'm gonna go and do that now, and then I guess we'll, we'll have a go. Okay, so everything is now washed and almost dry. And while I was doing that, I also opened up the, the multi-pack of cartridges that came with my starter kit. And in there you get 48 servings or I'm in six different flavors. So there's eight of each and they come in little blister packs of four. And there's eight strawberry, eight orange, eight lemon, eight apple, eight grape and eight cola. Now, because we had strawberry come with the the actual the pen itself, I think I'm going to stick with strawberry today because I'm not going to be cleaning it 50 times during this video because life is too short. So my next job is to put this back together, and then we'll um we'll have a go at actually using it to do some three three D printing. Maybe if I zoom you out slightly, I won't constantly be disappearing out of the bottom of the shot. Anyway, so we are clean, we are assembled, and then the next thing would be to plug it in. So we have a wire that goes in the top, and then I'll plug that into a plug that is possibly the wrong ampage. Is that even a word? Press the power button and it will show a red light to show it is heating up. If I hold it down, it flashes red, but it's not coming on. So I wonder if it doesn't like this plug. Let me try a different plug. Okay, so that plug seems to work. Um, it also is labelled with five volts and one amp, but who knows? But if I turn this around, I don't know if you can see there is a little red light just there. But essentially we are waiting for that red light to turn blue and when it does, we're ready to use. Now, as we heard in the instructions, it likes to be used on greaseproof, but it likes to be used. They recommend you use it on greaseproof paper, so I have been very organized and cut up lots of little bits of greaseproof. And I think I'm going to start by recreating the, the unpopular number toppers that we saw in the original video. I think I'm gonna to have to freehand my numbers because they had like a funky matte thing that they put their greaseproof paper over. I, I don't have one of those, so. Fine, it will do, it's just practice. So, oh, and my light's gone blue, perfect timing. So, I'm going to go with the strawberry, as I said, because I've got most of those, and it did say to use two. Um, okay, so now, I'm for some reason, the the little piston thing is, is at the bottom. So when I put it in, put it in kind of where I could reach. So I now need it to not be at the bottom. Okay, now the light's flashing blue and red. When I push the button to, right. I have no idea what's going on. I don't know if I'm doing it wrong or wait for the light to go blue again. But maybe I can, maybe you can see on the camera. Can you see that red thing? So that's the piston that pushes the candy or the isomalt down. So that needs to be up so I can put the, the actual thing in. Okay, so it's gone blue again. So there is a button here with what looks like two arrows pointing upwards, but if I press it, nothing's happening and it almost looks like it just also operates the power button. Maybe I need to turn it off. I'll slide it up on the back myself. Try again. See this is what's great about videos like this is that I essentially make all the mistakes and then you don't have to. Right, so turn it back on again. Light is red but hopefully it won't take long to go blue. So how are you anyway, while we're waiting around again? Do head to the comments and let me know what you're up to this weekend. Did anyone make any cakes? Love to see pictures. Be sure to tag me over on social media. My Instagram is at Mr. Baker's Cakes, all one word. Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, you name it, I'm, I'm probably there. Although I, I realized the other day that I haven't actually uploaded a TikTok for months. I have done some reels on Instagram. I feel like it's, you know, there's too many social media platforms for me to keep track of. We're blue. The light is blue. Okay, so let's try again. Right, you'll notice now that that red thing is gone because I slid it up inside. It says you have to drop these in, like, not square on. Like, 
kind of diagonally, and you need to put in two. So there's two of those. Now the light's gone off again. Now it could be my my cable thing, as as we have discovered. I don't have a good track record historically with powered items. If you think I should do another Easy Bake Oven video, by the way, let me know down in the comments. So I guess presumably now because it's red again, we're waiting for it to heat up the candy inside. But it did say, turn it on, get to temperature, and then insert candy cartridge. But I don't see why I couldn't have inserted the candy cartridge while it was heating up the first time, so I didn't have to wait twice. Polaroid are probably gonna watch this video and, and just be disgusted by my ineptitude. Okay, so the light keeps going off, so I think we are having flashbacks to the, the whole, oh, oh, things are happening. Things are happening. Yeah, I'm having absolute flashbacks to the Easy Bake Oven already. It's been extruding in the holder, but we seem to have survived that ordeal. Okay, so it's making a very quiet noise, and then it's gone off, and it's gone off again. I hate these videos. I mean, if we're gonna have dramas, at least let's have dramas because of my complete and utter ineptitude, not because apparently you need some bizarre plug socket that isn't standard. It's just going off, look. So on, red light, blue light on, off. Okay, so as it stands at the moment, we've got to the point where it will turn on, it will heat up, the light will go blue, and then when I try and actually use it, it switches off again. I wonder what would happen if I plugged it into a laptop. Okay, so I've now got my laptop plugged in, and then I've got a USB running from my laptop to this. So now let's see what happens if we try and extrude. Okay, we are in business. Oh my word. Okay, so that noise you can hear is the extruder being drawn back up. I managed about two thirds of one number using two of those candy cartridges. Let's try two more. Um, I'm not overly impressed with my work, I'll be honest with you. Let's try again. Working! So at least we've learned a lesson that using a laptop is the way forward. So if you have a laptop, um, I'd recommend plugging it in there. I don't know, maybe um, USB adapters in other countries are two amps instead of one amp like they are here. That might be why I'm having trouble. Oh, we're, we're in business again. Okay, so the problem I've got now is that that first bit that I'd already done has dried so or set. So what's happening now is I'm filling in these holes and um, it's, it's not going to look very good. I'm wondering if the reason why, oh I missed a bit, if the reason why they did the, the topper in the video like they did with the sprinkles on was to hide that it didn't look great, much like mine. Um, I'm gonna put that to the side. I'm not gonna try and stick sprinkles to it because it's already set too much. Let's try, can I fit another cartridge in? No, I can't, okay. Um, I'm gonna try and do the two and see if I've got any better. It comes out really slowly. It's not even like royal icing where you can get a, a steady stream going and do flooding in the same way that you would a royal iced biscuit. We've run out again. This bit, I don't know if you can see on film, the retraction of the extruder is really slow. So by the time you've managed to load in the next cartridge, and apparently it has to extract all the way to the top and then come back down again. So by the time you've done that, this is starting to set. So as I said, I'm trying to do it kind of like you do royal icing where you pipe the edges and then flood to fill it in. And I've missed a bit again. Okay, so there we go. There's my one and my two. Um,
I'm, I'm going to put those aside to dry. Now one thing I did think that this could be good for is when you are, I've got this jewel mould which I believe is from Wilton and when you're trying to fill it up using just isomalt that you've melted in, I use silicone cupcake cases to melt my isomalt in the microwave um, and it can be quite fiddly to pour into really small things like this but I'm wondering if maybe it will be easier to pipe isomalt in to the, some of these tiny little jewels than it is when I'm trying to pour it in. Let's fill a couple of these up and see what sort of effects we get from these. I mean, we will say that this is, it's quite a thick, thick old top, so I'm finding it quite tricky to see what I'm doing. I think that's why I'm constantly missing pieces. I have, however, just managed to smush my small jewel. Um, Let's try one of these ones over here. And we've run out again. And we've got this this one here is quite, in fact maybe this one, this is quite detailed. So let's see how good it is at getting into all the nooks and crannies and really picking up the detail of the mould. So it's not, it's definitely not as runny as, as normal isomalt is. So it's obviously not heating it up quite as much because there's a couple of bits where I haven't got quite to the edge of the mold here. And it's, um, I'm not able to like tap it and help it on its way at all. It's kind of very much, it's very thick. It's feeling like these have now started to dry. So I wonder if we can peel off. Oh. Can you see that the paper has left a residue on there? Um, let's try this one. Yeah, on that one it has as well. So we've got a residue from the greaseproof paper. What about these first gems that we did? I will do a, a bit of a close up in a minute so you can see what they look like. All right, we're gonna leave those to set for a little bit longer. Um, it definitely performs better on the silicone because it, it came out quite easy. But where it was in contact with it, it seems to, again, it's got quite a cloudy finish. Now I could hit these with a blowtorch afterwards to kind of shine them up again. I mean, this this gem, I've, oh dearie me, that's, that's terrible. Again, I'll, I'll do a close up in a second. It's not runny enough to get right in and make sure it's hitting kind of all of the detail that you want it to hit. So apologies, the lighting isn't great from, from this angle, but so those are my, my numbers. And if I, I turn them over, can you, can you see the residue from the, the paper? I don't know if you can. Um, but yeah, so there's my numbers and if you see, you can see every time I had to stop and start, there's, there's definitely a seam between the two bits of isomol. And then over here, that's one of my jewels. That was kind of my hyper detailed jewel. Um, and then we've got, I mean, this one was a total fail. I mean, I don't even know if I can get you to focus on that, but again, where it ran out partway through the molding, it just, yeah, it wasn't fab. Okay, so I've, I've had a little break, and while I was doing that, I've scoured YouTube to find some other reviews of this product to just to see if it's just me being, as I said earlier on, entirely inept. And it does seem that everyone who has had a go at using this has struggled. So I don't think it is just me. I really do want to give it the benefit of the doubt because there are also videos on YouTube of Polaroid demonstrating what you can do with it. And I mean, apparently there are various different templates you can get from their website. I, I haven't done that. You can print them off yourself and you can then lay your greaseproof paper over the, over the top and, and use those to help you. And in fact, there's a really cool one for a turtle, but unfortunately my printer's run out of ink at the moment. I'm kind of debating buying a new one rather than replacing the ink. I did also find a plug that has a 5 volt 2.5 amp, I don't, I don't know the word, but it is 2.5 amps. Um, so we're going to try that now and I'm just going to have one more play and, and just see if maybe with the, the benefit of a little breakaway I will miraculously have discovered some new skills and um, we shall see. Oh, I'm, I've given it a good clean as well, by the way, and I'm now switching to a different colour. Because why not? It's loaded up, let's get it on and charging up. 
and I found in one of my books, this is the Celtic Cakers cake decorating book, which was made by a few of my friends a couple of years ago, and in here I found some templates, similar to the ones on the Polaroid website, so bear with. Here we go. So this is actually, these are actually from a, a cookie piping tutorial in the book by Gail Porter, not the Gail Porter, but Irish cake artist Gail Porter. And they, as I say, they work in very much the same way as the tutorials on the uh, Polaroid website. So you print them off and then you can just lay your, your grease proof paper over the top and then trace over them. So I quite like this wow here. We're gonna give this a try. And yeah, we'll see if there's been any improvement in my skills since earlier on. In one of the videos I watched, the chap tried to do a free-handed flower and um, he also struggled. In fact, in, I don't know if I said this already, but in both the videos I watched from people just having a go and reviewing the, the product, neither of them were particularly positive reviews. So I'm hoping that it's not just me, that this is something that is quite tricky to get your head around. But that doesn't, of course, mean that with a practice, you wouldn't get better at it. My argument in response to that is always, though, within the realm of cake decorating, is if it's going to take me ages to master something new, is it an improvement on the way I do things already? Another example there would be the Profroster. I know loads of people use the Profroster and love the Profroster, but for me, the first time I tried using it, I didn't get as good results as I do when I cover my cakes normally. So for me, I was like, well, yes, fair enough, I could spend some time mastering using the Profroster, or if I already have a way that works for me, why would I change? The flip side to that would be something like the Sharp Edge Smoother, which the first time I used it, I got better results than I did when I just used to use the two Flexi Smoothers to do my sharp edges on my cakes. So in which case, for me, it was a logical move to start using the Sharp Edge Smoother all the time. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. Right, the light's gone blue. I'm gonna lay my grease proof over the top. And actually, I'm gonna do this upside down just so that hopefully you guys can see a little bit better on the camera. Another video I watched, by the way, the girl said that wouldn't it be better if it was wireless, and I possibly could agree. Um, a couple of other things, actually, that I've noticed. in On the Cake Decorating Company's website, I'm sure it said that if you hold down, in fact, let's grab this back in. If you hold this button and then let go, it stops, but it doesn't. It is literally on, off, on, off. So yeah, I don't know where that came from, unless mine's dodgy, but yeah, they said that you can hold it down for precision and then let go and it will automatically stop. And I don't know if you can hear, but it, it hasn't stopped. But yeah, so I'm just waiting for that plunger to come down. It's definitely not a quick tool. Right, there we go, we're coming through. So, oh, I can smell the cola. Okay, so I'm going to, just like I did with the numbers, I'm gonna trace around the outline of this W and then we'll try and fill it in. Oh, in the Cake Decorating Company website, they held it more upright as well, so let's try that. And again, see I've got part way through, now it's retracting back up, which again, if I open this up, we can watch happen and then we have to wait for it to come back down again. Now, if I was being conspiratorial, is that the word? There are some videos on YouTube, perhaps I can pop one on screen while I'm talking, where they're doing some quite complex designs. As I say, there's that 3D turtle that looks absolutely amazing. However, I personally don't believe that they were able to do those whole bits that they did where they were flooding in one go, because it's running out. So. Part of me wonders whether they had more than one on the go, so as one ran out, they were able to switch straight to another one, because again, probably can't see it with the, the, the pen in the way, but I'll show you in a second. There is a seam between my first lot of isomol and this second batch, and I just don't see that looking very good. Now, I have tried doing a few other bits and pieces with this off camera as well. I tried doing some script, script work, writing with it. I tried doing some string work, and I mean, the string work actually looks quite cool. However, the problem with isomalt, of course, is it absorbs moisture from the environment. So, if you were to do some like delicate string work on a cake, 
it's going to suck in that moisture from the, the environment and then um, collapse essentially. But yeah, so there is my W. I, I think you would struggle to know that that was a W. And again, there are seams between the first lot of isomalt and the second lot. And I'm still missing bits as well. So, um, yeah. Okay then. I mean, I think I could possibly keep trying to use this over and over again for forever. And possibly we would see some improvement. But for a tool that you essentially should be able to take out of the box and use, um, I'm afraid it's going to be a no from me. The concept is great. It's very much based on, I would say, similar 3D printing products that use regular 3D printing materials like plastics or whatever. But I just, I don't think the idea has translated well into a food-based product. I love using isomalt. I use isomalt for jewels. I use isomalt for eyes in sculpted cakes. I've used it to create some quite awesome um, cake toppers and kind of magical effects on like Halloween-y themed cakes and things like that. And one of the great things about isomalt is that when you melt it down into liquid, it's just the possibilities of what you can do with it are endless. Whereas this almost melts it down into kind of a gel. It doesn't get it hot enough to be truly liquid. And I just, I feel like the material, the isomalt itself suffers as a result. Similarly, there is no control with this at all. This piston that pushes down, pushing the isomalt out through this end here, it moves at a consistent speed the whole time. Quite often 3D printing pens like this will have speed functions, so that if you want it to come out slowly and thin, you have it on one setting, and if you want it to come out faster and thicker, you can switch it up to a, a, a higher setting, and this doesn't have that. If it did, I think it would be a better product, because you could pipe out your lines, and then you could turn up the speed to do your flooding. Equally, the nozzle on the end is very, very small, so you only get a very fine stream coming out, which means that you are pretty limited. There is no option to make this little nozzle thicker or thinner. And then of course there's the issue with the capacity. As you've seen, every time I've tried to make anything that isn't a tiny jewel, I'm running out of isomalt part way through, and then I have to wait for that piston to go all the way back up to the top of the pen, then I put the next candy cartridge in, and then it has to come all the way back down again. And I timed it earlier on, and it takes roughly about one minute to essentially finish a cartridge wait for the piston, put the next cartridge in, and then wait for it to come back down again. And in that one minute, the isomalt that you've already piped out, for argument's sake, or 3D printed, has already started to, to set, which means that that's where you're getting these awful kind of seams between the two. If I was being charitable, I would say that this could possibly be quite fun for youngsters to have a go at, but of course, it's marketed as being suitable for ages 14 plus, so you know, it's not even designed for youngsters. But as professional cake decorators, I don't think it's going to be able to create cake decorations or toppers or anything that is of a suitable standard that we would be prepared to put on our cakes that we are putting out for sale. Yeah, I honestly, I don't understand really where this fits into the market, who this is for, but I don't think it's for me. And if I was being brutally honest, I think it's a gimmick. It's something that people will buy because they're intrigued by it, but it will very quickly fall to the back of a drawer, never to be touched again. And I think that's a real shame. But if I am able to stop a few people wasting their money on something that they won't use, then hopefully this video has been worthwhile. If you have picked up the Polaroid Candy Play 3D pen and you've achieved better results, then I would love to hear from you. I would, you know, if there's something I'm doing wrong or there are, there's this functionality that I've missed or anything like that, then let me know because I would be quite happy to have another play and hopefully get some better results. But as it stands at the moment, it's a no from me. If you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up down below before you go today. And if it's your first time watching a video here on the Mr. Baker's Cakes YouTube channel, you can also hit that big red subscribe button before you go. If you'd like to get a push notification every time I upload a new video, which incidentally I do every Monday at 6pm, then make sure you click on that bell icon as well. I will be back at the same time next week with another video, but until then, as always, 
Take care of yourselves and happy baking.